Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dark Arm Duels to Integrity doing some Dark Magician test hands. So, without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell in there so you can come part of Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards. Like getting your name, description, every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your Patreon. So, without further ado, Let's get straight on into this. So I'm really excited to show you guys these Dark Magician test hands because this deck is really fun to be able to play and an extremely nostalgic deck that I absolutely love. I've included some really spicy tech cards in this build for you guys. So if you guys would like to check out the deck profile, as always, for every test hand video, it is down in the description down below. But this deck is really fun to be able to play, especially with the engines that I've included in this deck and the spicy tech cards that we've included in this build. But I absolutely love playing Dark Magician because it's just really, really nostalgic. So, you guys know it's dad rule number one that you gotta pile shuffle the deck or you run the risk of breaking. So now that we got the deck pile shuffle, let's go ahead and give the deck a quick shuffle and see what we can do for our first test hand because this deck is really, really fun to be able to play. So, let's go ahead and shuffle it up and see what we can do. So, we're going to go ahead and draw, and we're going to draw into a copy of the Ultimate Wizard in terms of attack and defense, Dark Magician, a copy of the Sinful Spoils of Doom, a copy of Wanted, that's actually really good, a copy of Pre-Prep, and a copy of Die Bell Star. So, we don't want to open up the Die Bell Star in this particular instance because we already have the copy of Wanted, but it's totally fine because we have another copy of Die Bell Star in the deck, so it's totally fine because we have another copy. So... What we're going to do right off the bat is activate our copy of Preparation. Preparation is going to instantly get us to our copy of Illusion. Illusion is really good to be able to get here because now we can use the copy of Illusion to reveal it in our hand to be able to grab the exact card that we want, which I'm actually going to grab a Magician's Rod as a normal summon because I don't really have any spells and traps that I want to use here. And then we're going to place our copy of Illusion of Chaos on top of the deck. Then we're going to go ahead and normal summon out our copy of Magician's Rod, using its ability to grab a copy of our Secrets of Dark Magic to be able to give us a draw later. And now we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. That's one, really important. You want to be able to shuffle the deck before you get any draws or anything, because it really makes it so you don't draw into that copy of Illusion of Chaos. So, now at this point, we're going to go ahead and use the copy of our Secrets of Dark Magic to be able to fusion summon using these two into the Dark Magicians. Now that's really important to be able to do here because we do have the copy of the Wanted, which is going to let us add a card to hand and we're going to use the ability of our Dark Magicians as well to top deck a card. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck really quickly and then top deck a card. If it's a Spell or Trap, we get to set it to our side of the field, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and use the ability Chain 1, Chain 2, and we're going to go ahead and add a copy of our Soul Servant, which we're just going to set to our side of the field. And if it's a quick play, we can actually activate it the same turn of the copy of the Dark Magician. So now we use the ability of our Wanted to be able to grab a copy of our Die Bell Star from our deck to our hand. And once we grab that copy of Die Bell Star, we're going to go ahead and shuffle up the deck. And then we have more plays to go into because now we can put the exact card we want on top of the deck. So we're going to use the ability of our Soul Servant to put whatever we want on top of the deck because it was set off the copy of the Dark Magicians. We can put it on top of the deck to grab exactly what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and use its ability to be able to put Magician Salvation on top of the deck, which is our field spell because it's going to get us a two cards instead of one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to banish our copy of Soul Servant from our graveyard to be able to draw a card, which is going to be our Magician Salvation. We're going to then activate Magician Salvation, and once we do, we get to actually place on our side of the field, or set to our side of the field, excuse me, a copy of Eternal Soul. So once we get our Eternal Soul, we're going to set it to our side of the field. Then we're going to use the Die Bell Star to send Magician Salvation to the graveyard because we really don't need it because we don't have Dark Magician Girl anyways to be able to summon our Die Bell Star to our side of the field. And then we have the ability of Die Bell Star to be able to set our other copy of our Sinful Spoils Trap, getting us both of them, which is insane. I love that about this card. It's so cool that we actually get both of them on our side of the field. Because now we can actually activate Spells and Traps. We have a Draw Engine and we have a way to revive our Dark Magicians from the graveyard, which is really nice. And what we set up with this is actually going to be insane because we have the ability to revive Dark Magician during our opponent's turn off of the Eternal Soul. This has the ability to make a Spellcaster unaffected by card effects um, until the end of the turn, but you do have to send to the graveyard during the next standby phase, which will be Die Bell Star, and has the ability to drop your opponent's monster's attack points down by 2,500, and if they are reduced down basically to zero, 
then they get destroyed. Almost like a Slifer the Sky Dragon ability. And we have a Negate on our side of the field as well. So it's just a really good field to be able to establish. So during our opponent's turn, we're going to use the effect of Eternal Soul to bring back Dark Magician. You can use it right here with the Dark Magician to be able to reduce it down because you're going to just drop the Dark Magician into the graveyard and then revive it back with Eternal Soul on the next turn. So it's totally fine. So this is basically free. You have the Dibel Star card to be able to send this to the graveyard. And then the Dibel Star can go off as well if you want to. This is going to let us draw a card when we activate a spell, which is going to get us a copy of Magician Souls. And then during our follow-up turn, we're actually going to draw into a copy of Magician's Rod, which is going to get us completely set up so we can normal summon Rod, get exactly what we want, use the copy of Magician Souls, turn it into whatever card we want to turn it into for, say, a Dark Magician, send Dark Magician Girl to the graveyard. Whatever you want to do with this, it just gives you complete setup to be able to just link climb into something like a Selene or an access code to be able to just go in for game. So... You have all this insane board that you can establish, and I really am glad that we drew into both of our engines between Dark Magician and our copies of our Dibel Star cards, because now I get to show you guys both of them at the same time, which is so cool. So, let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck again and see what we can do for our second test hand. See what we can do for our next one, because this deck is just wild to play. Like, I can show you guys... You just have all these really neat plays that you can pull off with the deck like that to be able to establish some insane boards. And that's something that Dark Magician just doesn't really establish that much as negates besides Dragoon. And this deck really relies on summoning out the copy of the Dark Magicians because there's so many spells and traps that you're going to activate, which is really, really cool. Tamias is going to help you get to that copy of Dragoon, but it's still really insane how easy it is to summon out the Dark Magician. So... Let's go ahead and draw and see what we can get. So we're going to draw into a copy of Pre-Prep that's already getting to a copy of Illusion. A copy of Magician's Rod. Now we have a Normal Summon. Our copy of Dark Magical Circle. Wanted. And a copy of Pre-Prep. So the Pre-Prep is not super needed. We don't need two of them in our hand. But it's okay. So what we're going to do is activate our copy of our Pre-Prep. Pre-Prep is going to instantly get us to our copy of Illusion. Illusion can then go off. And we're going to go ahead and reveal it. To be able to get a copy of Magician's Souls. Souls is really important to get here because we can just go ahead and basically what you're going to do here is activate the pre-prep, add this here, this goes to your hand, reveal this card in your hand, and then add from your deck to your hand your copy of your Magician Souls, and then place this card on top of the deck which is going to basically get the exact card that you need, which is the copy of Magician Soul. So we turned our copy of Pre-Prep basically into a Rota because it searches the searcher for the deck, which is really cool. And then now at this point, what we're going to do is activate the copy of Magician Souls in our hand to be able to send from our deck to the graveyard the Dark Magician, aka the Ultimate Wizard in terms of attack and defense, and then summon out our copy of Magician Souls. So now at this point, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to activate, you want to basically, before you go in for like, everything you want to basically um get all your searches out of the way before you get your draw here so what we're going to do is we're going to use the effect of wanted here and we're going to grab a copy of Dibel star which is really cool to be able to do also with that first test hand on the follow-up you could banish this to get a draw by putting one of your sinful spool cards back which is something that a lot of players forget about because it's in the graveyard this card is more than a roto so now at this point, we can go ahead and normal summon the Magician's Rod. Magician's Rod is going to get us into our copy of Salvation, just like before, because we do have that Dark Magician in the graveyard now. So we have a way to bring it back, which is really nice. So we're going to go ahead and get Salvation. And once we activate our Salvation, we can then use its ability to be able to set to our side of the field our copy of Eternal Soul, which is going to help us out a lot, because now we have the copy of Eternal Soul set. And we have our copy of our Dark Magical Circle. So we can kind of take a peek at what we're going to be able to grab off the copy of the Magician's uh, Souls here. Which is really nice because when you do it this way, you can kind of exactly see what you're going to get. Which is nice. So what we're going to do is activate our copy of our uh, Dark Magical Circle. And it kind of lets you see if you want to put two, one card into it, what you want to do. What your cards are worth replacing with. Because you're going to get to see exactly what you're going to draw into. So we're going to go ahead and reveal the Soul Servant. We're grabbing Soul Servant, definitely. So we can actually grab two hand traps if we put two spells into this, which is really nice. So we're going to go ahead and put these on top of the deck. And once we do, we now have the copy of the Soul Servant that we can actually activate to put anything that we want on top of the deck. Or you can go ahead and use the ability 
of the uh, Magician Soul to grab us two hand traps because you can use these two in the hand to be able to draw two, which is going to give us the two hand traps, which is basically going to give us two negates. So you can do it that way instead if you want to, and then we'll also get an additional draw of the copy of the Soul Servant, which is going to be really nice. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to do it that way because I'd rather have the two hand traps than anything else. So we're going to go ahead and use both of these with our copy of Soul Servant our copy of our Magician Souls to be able to discard to grab our two hand traps, and then now we also have the ability of the Soul Servant, which we didn't need its ability to be able to stack a card, to be able to just draw an additional card off the top. So we're going to draw into another copy of Soul Servant, so we just replaced it anyways. We're going to use Dibel Star's ability, and then put our copy of Dibel Star on the field by sending Soul Servant to the graveyard, and then we're going to use our Dibel Star's ability, and I'm actually going to put on my side of the field the copy of the Sinful Spoils of Doom. It's totally up to you which one you get. You can get the trap, you can get the spell. Totally up to you which one you get in this situation. We're going to go ahead and set that to our side of the field. We're going to set the Imperm, and then once we do, we're going to link probably both of these away for something. You can link into an SP if you want to. If you don't have SP, you can link into something else. You could probably link into a Link Karibo if you wanted to link into Link Karibo. You can link into IP to be able to go in for Unicorn during the opponent's turn. It's totally up to you. You just kind of want to get these zero attack point monsters off the field just to get these cards off the field. You can link into IP, which is going to give you more utility. You can also link the Magician's Rod away for Artemis if you want to link away for Artemis. So then you on the follow-up, you contribute the Artemis, add this back to hand, which is another option. So you could just leave this on the field like this if you wanted to. And then go like this if you want to do this, which is going to give you a little bit more plays to be able to just tribute during the opponent's turn so you can get another card. Because we already have the copy of Eternal Soul. We have basically with this setup, we have a banish with the uh, Magician's Dark Magical Circle. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to revive back the Dark Magician. And once you revive Dark Magician, this is going to give us a Banish. You have a Negate with the Imperm. You have this that can basically board wipe with the copy of Dark Magician. We have the Ash that's a Negate. So we basically have like three Negates established with this. Because we have these two right here that we drew into. We have a Banish here, which is a Disruption. And we have a board wipe, which is really nice. So then also what I was saying that you can do during the opponent's turn is you can do this. So during the opponent's turn... When you have all this established, you can revive back when you pass. You're going to revive back your copy of your Magician, Dark Magic, uh, Dark Magician off the Eternal Soul. When the Eternal Soul activates, you can then tribute this to add this back to hand, which is going to give you more plays in the long run. Because once you do that, this card has a really insane ability that during your opponent's turn, if you activate a spell or trap, while this card's in the grave, except during the damage step, tribute a spellcaster, add this card back to your hand. So you just tribute the Artemis, which is why you play the Artemis, to be able to add back this so you constantly have a way to be able to normal summon and bring out other stuff, which is really nice. So you have this field established. You also have this. This was also activated already, excuse me. So when this revives, you can banish a card as well because a Dark Magician was put back on the field. So then also on top of that, we have the Sinful Spools that can target this and then it'll drop everything down by 25 which is really nice on the opponent's side. It makes him unaffected by everything. And then you basically, at this point, just board wipe your opponent's monsters and drop them down by 25. If they go down below 25 with this, then they basically lose the monsters. And then on the follow-up, he'll go to the graveyard on our next standby phase. You revive him again, you get another banish. You have the Imperm, you have the Ash, you have everything. And then on the follow-up, we're going to draw into another pre-prep, which is going to get us another Souls, which then, if you wait, you can bring out Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl because you can do it like this to be able to just basically set this insane board up because you use the use the uh, Magician Souls to send a grave. Uh, the Dark Magician Girl, Revive Dark Magician, and then your copy of your Magician Salvation will bring them both back, which is insane. So, let's go into the next one, guys, and see what we can do for the next test hand. Like, that's that's just so insane, the follow-up. And then you also have the Soul Servant that's going to get us a draw, too. Like, there's just so, so much that you can do with that. Like, so much utility that you have to pull off. And even recovery with the Wanted. Like, you get a draw three on that follow-up turn, which is just so insane. So, let's go ahead and shuffle it up and see what we can do for our next test hand. Make sure we didn't shuffle any of our extract monsters. I think the only one we went into that time was Artemis, so 
I don't think we actually shoveled that one up. So let's go ahead and shovel it up again and see what we can do for our next test hand. See if we can do something crazy like that again. But basically, Dark Magician is just insane. Like, I love Dark Magician. It's just such a fun deck to play. You get to summon out all these really cool boss monsters. You get to summon out the original Dark Magician. And you get to summon out Die Bellstar. Like, sign me up. That's so cool. So let's go ahead and shuffle it up and see what we can do for our next test hand. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up and draw. So we're going to draw another copy of Magician Salvation, a copy of Illusion of Chaos, Tamias this time, Soul Servant, and our copy of Secrets of Dark Magic. So this is a really interesting hand because we do have the copy of the Tamias in our hand, so we can pull off some really weird stuff here. So you can basically grab exactly what you want off the Illusion if you want to, because what you can do with this hand is we can do it a little bit different. So what we're going to do is activate, we're going to save this because we want to be able to shuffle up the deck. So we're going to go ahead and activate the illusion. And once we activate illusion, this time I'm actually going to grab the dark magic or magician's rod. Because if you grab magician's rod here, we have some really interesting plays that you can pull off. So what we're going to do is activate our copy of, we can shuffle up the deck in a minute. We can go ahead and shuffle up the deck. So we're going to go ahead and activate our Magician's Salvation, set our copy of Eternal Soul to our side of the field, and then now we're going to Normal Summon the Magician's Rod, and once we Normal Summon Magician's Rod, it's going to be able to get us to a copy of our, where is it, Dark Magical Circle. The reason we're going to do a Dark Magical Circle is because it's going to set us up with some really cool plays to be able to stack basically exactly what we want which is really, really nice because it lets you place any card you want on top of your deck, which is just really insane because this card has the ability to place one card from your hand deck or graveyard that is Dark Magician or specifically is Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl. So what we can do is actually grab anything that we want. So what we're going to do is activate our copy of our Dark Magical Circle and then we're going to use its ability and we're going to actually put, because we want the Dark Magician, we're going to put it on top of the deck because we're going to chain our copy of Soul Servant and we're going to put our copy of Dark Magician on top of the deck because we want it for a fusion play so we can go into Dragoon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this on top of the deck as a chain link one, chain link two because it's a quick play, put the copy of Dark Magician on top of the deck so we're going to shuffle up the deck really quick so we don't know anything that we've got on top except for the Dark Magician. Use our copy of Soul Servant to put Dark Magician on top of the deck. And then once we do, we're going to go ahead and use the copy of our Dark Magical Circle. Reveal top three, or we get to look at top three, which is going to be these three. Which we don't hit anything except for the Dark Magician, which guaranteed us that Dark Magician that we wanted to hit. Put these back on top of the deck in any order. And then now we can go in for our play. We have basically set the copy of Eternal Soul. Use our copy of Secrets of Dark Magic to be able to fuse away all of these to be able to go in for our copy of our Dragoon. You can send a Spellcaster Monster or a Spell Trap that mentions Dark Magician from Hand Revealed to Grave. So we can actually do it this way if you want to. You'll be able to send this to the graveyard to summon out Tamias. And then Tamias is a walking poly. So we have a negate for the Dragoon. So we're going to fuse these away. And once we fuse these away, we're going to summon out our copy of Dragoon to our side of the field which is really nice. And then now we have basically a crazy setup again. Now with this setup, it looks a little bit more minimal with what we set up, but that's fine because the Dragoon is usually enough because we have a Banish and a Negate set up. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to actually pass over to the opponent. When we pass over to the opponent, what they're going to do is whatever they're going to do. And we have the copy of the Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul will go off revive back our copy of Dark Magician, and once we revive back our copy, oh, excuse me, actually, before we even pass, we've totally forgot the Soul Servant ability to draw an additional card. So we actually have an Ash going into the next turn. So when we pass over to the opponent at this point, we're going to go ahead and let them go. So now we have basically three negates, which is insane, or a Banish, a negate, and a second negate with the Ash. So at this point, what we're going to do is we have the Ash, we're going to negate something with the Ash, we have the Eternal Soul that we can flip against the opponent, Revive back Dark Magician, banish a card, and then the Dragoon is going to negate a card by discarding, and then we're going to put a counter on him, and then we draw for the next turn, and we draw into a copy of Ash, which we can then link summon into whatever we want, basically, which is really insane, because now we can just normal summon out our copy of Ash, if we want to normal summon the Ash, I know it looks weird, but you can normal summon out the copy of Ash, and then once you do, you can actually link away for the copy of Emduk, 
with your copy of Your Dark Magician to be able to make the copy of MDook on your side of the field. And then you can link both of these away and summon out the SP. And then SP will go off to be able to banish a card. Uh, and then we also have the ability to bring back our copy of Dark Magician to our side of the field with our copy of Eternal Soul during our turn to get us another banish, which we don't have anything in the hand to negate with Dragoon, but that's okay. Because at this point, you're probably going to win because this is at 4K, this is at 16, this is at 25, so you just swing right there. And that's basically game. Because you have like 40 or 65 here, and then this is 16, which it only takes 15, is like 81 together. So you basically win at that point. So that's really insane to be able to establish a board like that. So you get really insane simple boards like this that you can basically deal with the opponent to be able to just deal with their field. But you also have those really cool boards like before where you have like the Die Bell Star stuff as well, which is just really, really cool. So I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. This deck is insane. I did get to show you guys the Die Bell Star stuff, how it interacts with the deck, which is really nice. Show you guys some of the end boards that you can make, how to interact with the opponent. It's just really cool how you can like use the Die Bell Star cards along with your Dark Magician cards because Dark Magician is just so cool. And I love being able to in like the interactions between them is just so cool because they're both level seven spellcasters. And so all of the Die Bell Star cards just works so well with dark magician especially that simple spells of doom is just really 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 nice for this deck so i think that's gonna do it for this one guys if you guys would like check out the deck profile as always it is down in the description down below it's a really fun deck to be able to play and it's really insane how easy it is to establish those insane boards as you guys saw so you'll just make some really crazy boards so that's gonna do it for this one guys don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell in there so you can come part of the notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys